Now we are delighted to be joined with Sarah True here because she knows all about the term fourth and I thought I would talk a little bit about that just now. She was fourth place at the London Games in 2012. She then moved up with ease to the Ironman 70.3 distance after her second Olympics in Rio and took fourth place at Ironman 70.3 Chattanooga Worlds. After that, you moved up to full Ironman distance and last year here in Hawaii, she had a fantastic debut performance to come fourth. Now, moving on to this 2019 season, fourth took a little bit of a twist on the whole racing dynamic because Sarah collapsed unfortunately not one but two of our Ironmans in qualifying or trying to qualify for her race this year. She finally got her slot after a third Ironman attempt at Mont Blanc at the final weekend of racing and here we are ready for Kona at your fourth race, you guessed it, of the 2019 <laughs> campaign. So we thought we'd talk to Sarah about highs and lows of all of that and the reflection that she's had on that process. That's too short. So Sarah, take us back to being here this time last year, Kona 2018. How do you think that whole year since then has been in your words? Yeah, so last year, uh, first year doing Ironman World Championship, you walk away with fourth place thinking, hey, that went pretty well. I learned a lot. I'm gonna come back here next year and just, you know, build on the success I had the previous year. And it's been a lot harder year than I anticipated. Um, and that's okay, that's Iron Man, right? So it was almost too easy for me last year. So now it's all kind of catching up that this Iron Man stuff is pretty hard. I've had some medical issues kind of come up in races and it's been a lot harder route to get here. The positives are is my training is better than it was last year. Um, I'm a more experienced Iron Man athlete you know, there is this one variable that we don't know whether or not my body will let me race. Um, but we do know that I'm a better, more experienced Ironman athlete. So yeah, that's, that's why I'm gonna line up on uh, race day and just try to make the most of the opportunity. Because we could easily say fourth place, that's the first athlete, top three here in Hawaii requalify automatically for the next year. The athlete simply has to validate by finishing another full Ironman distance race. But you came fourth, that's an absolutely brilliant result. I can't imagine you had any doubts that I'm gonna tick that box easily. I'll go to whichever race I choose. I'll pick the one that suits my schedule the best. Tick that box, bang, all things being well, and I'll be back in Kona quite happily. And, and the first Ironman you chose was in June, right? Yes, the, the first race I chose was Ironman Cairns. I knew I was in good enough shape to qualify and um, about 16K into the run, I blacked out. Um, which was definitely unexpected. That's not happened to me before. Um, so yeah, then all of a sudden, this plan that you have for the season, you have to kind of reconsider where you're going to go. But we knew that I had gotten in good training before that race. We knew that I was fit enough to get it done. So it wasn't a question of whether or not I was a good enough athlete to qualify for Kona. It was a question of having things line up for me to get my slot. So it's, yeah, I think uh, it's been a, a different year than we expected for sure. <laughs> I, yeah, and, but, but at that point after having that blackout, yeah. I don't imagine, maybe I'm correct me if I'm wrong, that you perhaps panic too much because we all have bad races from time to time. Mm. Things go wrong. Yeah. And it was only June, plenty time to reconsider. And that's what you did. You picked another one the next month, taking, presumably thinking I've carried all that fitness to train for that Ironman, I can reassess and start another one, which was Frankfurt the following month. Yeah, so I, we, we had Frankfurt in my back pocket in case, you know, I got a flat, something unexpected happened. Never in a million years would we have thought that I would just black out, you know, 16K into the run. So we had me signed up for it, and it was a question of, all right, do we think it makes sense? Does it make sense for you to do this race? And at that point, we, you know, my coach and I decided that um, this was a risk we were willing to take. It was a, we, we calculated that it was a good race for me to target. My fitness was there. It still allowed me 
If I were to qualify in Frankfurt, it'd still allow me plenty of time for a good lead up to Kona. So we showed up optimistic. You know, I, I was definitely fit. I was ready to go and get my slot. And it didn't happen. <laughs> now, that was, I mean, we were actually there filming in, in yeah. Germany for that weekend. And we saw you absolutely crushing on the marathon. The live coverage showed you happily in front, yeah. seemingly in complete control. Yeah. And obviously, the unfortunate happened not at 16K or 16 miles, but only a kilometer or so, you know, agonizingly yeah. close to the finish. And that's, that is, if anything, epitomizing the absolute lows of performance racing that you can be within grasp of winning an Ironman. Yeah. And then that happens. So talk a little bit about how you were able to, I guess, bounce back from that. It was about 700, 800 meters from the finish. Um, the medical team decided to take me off the course and you know, they, the first thought is, what could I have done differently? Yeah. You know, was this something within my control? What did I do wrong? Let's look at this systematically. Uh, and let's also rule out any underlying medical issue. I think it's really easy in sport to come to, you know, these, these gut responses of, oh my goodness, you know, I, I bonked or I did X, Y, or Z, and basically, having a list of things that could have led me to get to that point, you know, basically just working through, checking things off one by one, um, and trying to come up with a, an answer to the problems that I've been facing in racing this year. So that must have been quite a daunting prospect because you're then faced with a little bit of a crossroads because you're mm. a professional athlete. Kona is, for want of a better term, the be all and end all of the professional racing year. Mm. There is an awful lot of pressure, it would seem, placed on athletes to try and be here. Yeah. You clearly wanted to be here. That was the whole point in doing these Ironman to qualify. So you're then in July, you've got to decide, do I want to go through all of that, like, all of that again? And am I healthy and able to do that, to then get myself here to Kona mm. to, to do myself justice? Emotionally, I wanted to be here. And, you know, I'm fit. I feel excited to race. There's just more uncertainty going in than we would like because let's be honest doing multiple ironman races in a year takes a lot out of you it takes a lot out of you physically it takes a lot out of you mentally it doesn't mean i can't perform it just makes it harder to perform so that has been you know clearly a, a, a diff well, the difficult maybe not the right word a, a, an interesting process to evaluate where you are after each of those races to decide whether you are able to get back here firstly because clearly you want to be back here in kona that emotional drive was there but that evaluation of good races, bad races along the way is no different whether you're a pro athlete or an amateur, is it? Not at all. I think the important part to really drive home, though, is that um, while you know, emotion is what gets me out the door, it gets me motivated for races, we have been really, really cognizant of the, of the data, of the scientific part of it, and being honest with ourselves about whether or not it makes sense to race. So I think sometimes it's really common to get caught up in the, you know, the Kona dream without stepping back and looking at, does it still make sense for me to continue? So that's, am I physically able to perform, you know, and my training's great, I feel strong, I feel stronger than last year. We have this element of uncertainty whether or not, you know, my body will let me, whether I'll have a similar issue as I did in Frankfurt and Cairns, but I am trained, yeah. I am healthy, you know, I don't have injury, I'm not sick. So all along the way, we've been looking at it like, yes, there's this emotional component that makes you focused on this goal race, but let's also continuously check in and be honest with ourselves about whether or not it makes sense. Because at the end of the day, there's always another race, you know, like if, if we felt that, that my performance was anyway in jeopardy, I can always do another Ironman. You know, I can push it off. But at the end of the day, like, I'm fit, I'm excited to race, and we're, we're continuing on. Well, we're excited to watch your race, and we're definitely glad that you didn't pull the pin on your training before Ironman Hawaii, because we're going to be out there cheering for Sarah very loudly in a couple of weekends' time. So if you two have had a feeling that you had to skip a race or move forward, then please tell us your story and drop them down in the comments below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, please hit that thumb up like button. Don't forget to find the globe somewhere on screen to subscribe and get all of our other videos. And if you want to see a video that we did about Sarah and her pro bike, you can get that here.